Did you know that worms can teach us a lot about reinforced concrete structures? My name is Tyler Lay. I'm a professor at Oklahoma State University, and this video is about development length. These footers are being poured, and out of them are sticking rebar. They don't look right. They look like they're out of place. Why would they be there? But after they take the forms off, they're still there. They're critically important. But every single time I see them, I think of one thing, worms, like Slimy the Worm. I love Slimy. He was Oscar the Grouch's best friend on Sesame Street. He was amazing, but no, seriously, Slimy is gonna be a very important part of this video today. But we're gonna answer this question. How do you transfer load from one concrete member to another? To explain this, I'm showing a concrete slab. It has rebar sticking out of it. And let's say we pour another concrete member above it, like a column. Now I'm leaving out a lot of steel because in three dimensions it would look something like this. Oh man. But we're gonna simplify things and just make it look like this. Now I put a load on the top. We're gonna try to bend it. And that's gonna put compression on one side and tension on the other. It's gonna try to pull that bar out of the concrete below it. That area is critical and that area is what this video is a lot about now that rebar may be saying to itself how in the world can i resist being pulled out and this is development length this is what it is this resistance to being pulled out of the concrete this transferring of load is what development length is again Slimy is now scared, ah, because his worm friend is, no, being attacked by a bird, right? The early bird gets the worm, oh my gosh, right? The worm is now saying to himself, how can I resist being pulled out? That's the same thing that the rebar said, right? How can I resist being pulled out? Well, one way is you can have a rough surface on the outside, right? Worms, do they have rough surfaces? Well, they have these little wrinkly things on them and that serves a purpose. There's also lugs on rebar that helps grab onto our concrete. And now as we start to try to pull our worm out of the concrete or pull our rebar out of the concrete, those lugs, those little higher raised areas, they're gonna resist. They're going to say, no, I don't wanna leave, right? And now another thing, how else, other than that rough surface, was there another way that I could resist being pulled out? Well, of course, you can go deep, baby, right? Get in that ground deep if you're a worm. Get in that concrete deep if you are a rebar. And if you're deep enough, you will be okay. Now to explain this, I'm going to have a whole set of worms. And they're all going to be in soil. And there's going to be a whole worm family. We've already shown one going deep. And his friend, his brother there, is actually bent, right? Bent at a 90 degree angle. And you might say, do worms really do this? Are worms smart enough to do this? Yes, they are. Worms have actually evolved over time. And if you study them, you will see they know when they hit the surface. I don't know if it's roots. I don't know if it's ground packing or whatever. But they know to take an angle right before they come out because they're scared of birds. Ah, but also we do this in concrete. We use big angled rebar, 90 degree angles. Yes, this works for worms. This also works for concrete. Now, what if the worm put his tail up at the end? Would that be possible to do? Well, we do it in concrete. If we don't have the area for the leg, we might bend it up. And again, if it's deep enough, it will anchor itself and it will resist the loads. With this next one, what if the worm grabbed onto a rock? A rock? Is this real? No, I don't think so, but we do it in concrete. We actually have this thing called headed rebar, where we, we weld a head onto the rebar, and it's actually pretty awesome, and you should try it out. Um, but there's another way. The worms may get their worm friends, and they may start grabbing onto one another, holding onto one another into the soil. Yes, Slimy's got lots of friends, and they all work together to hold onto one another, and we do this in concrete as well. We just, this is called a lap. 
where these bars overlap and again, hold on to one another. There's another way to do this with a splice, a rebar splice. Here is a lot more pictures on the splice. You can see the hole where the bar goes in and how it grips on to the bar itself. There's another way though. If I have one of these bends, I may have a worm going in the opposite direction. Do worms do this? I don't think so, but we do this in concrete. If you really wanna make sure things are anchored, you actually hook the bars around one another and this is often done. So why is development length so important? It is critically important. You can do all your designs right, but if you get this wrong, you are not going to get the capacity. Your structure will fail suddenly. It will fail to low strength. It could kill a lot of people. This is a big deal, and that is why it has to be gotten correctly. Now, how do I find the development length? That is a great question. Now, you would use this equation. <laughs> I have a whole nother video about that view that if you really want to get into the details. But here are some simple tools for you. If I have a straight bar or a lapped bar, a good rule of thumb is 60 to 40 bar diameter. So if I know the diameter of the bar I'm lapping, I wanna overlap it by 40 to 60 bar diameters. 60 is a safe assumption. For example, if I'm using a number four bar, that's a half inch diameter, my lap or my embedment needs to be 30 inches. You say, man, that's long, right? That's why people use hooks. If you hook the bar, you can reduce that by about 50%. If you use a headed bar, you can reduce that even more. So in summary, when designing, development length become a worm. Think about what it's like to be a worm and that will help you understand how to design and what development length is all about. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment about your development length challenges. Did this help you? Are you going to think about worms and development length for the rest of your life? I know I do. And of course, check me out at Instagram and Facebook at concrete.tyler. Take care, everybody. And of course, as always, watch out for birds.